Welcome back. Welcome in. This is Country Roads Confidential at earsports.com, part of the Paramount Podcast Network. I am Mike Casaza. I'm going to name my co-host today. Chris Anderson. It's not that hard, right? <laughs> More difficult than you might think. Maybe. We are nine days out from the season opening backyard brawl. West Virginia against number 17 Pitt. September 1st, 7 p.m. ESPN, Acrisure Stadium. We do and do not know who's going to play quarterback for West Virginia and also possibly, maybe, probably Pitt. Gamesmanship is afoot. I have some anecdotes and theories about that. Um, and I think the big news yesterday, Chris, was that you and I were both under the impression that a decision had been made and maybe would be even announced as to the identity of QB1 for the Mountaineers. Didn't happen. I'm not exactly sure how big of a mountain to make this molehill. Because I think we kind of know how it ends. Does it matter? Is it something just to get fired up about because we need something else to talk about? Does it matter because maybe more people know than it's been let on? It does it not matter because this does seem pretty obvious. It's it's strange because, if you know, typically you think I, I think. The why is what's important here. Mm -hmm. Why is it not being announced? And, and if if the answer is West Virginia is trying to play games and, and like you said, gamesmanship with Pitt and trying to hide something. That's a problem because. If West Virginia is trying to keep secret something that might be the worst kept secret in college football, and they think that's going to be the difference in the game and the season over, then West Virginia has a lot bigger problems than gamesmanship with their quarterback. And I'd like to think they don't have that, that, that many issues. So I, I don't believe that's it. And I posted on the board, and you know, some of the other reasons are a little, uh, you know, less concerning. Uh, not that big of a deal. It is what it is. Uh, I think, you know, I, I haven't heard anything specific, so let's not get anything crazy here. But he, I thought it was notable that he said it was, he was confident about his present and the future. And, you know, started when he went and talked about the quarterbacks, he made sure to compliment all four of them. And it's just, the way it is in college football. I mean, am I, am I jumping too far ahead already? Are we, am I going too far, Mike? No, I think a general sketch is good, and we can circle back and, and kind of okay. spend some time on these stones that you're crossing here. But continue. I think you're, you're going somewhere with this. Yeah, because I think, you know, I think he said everything he said for a reason, and part of that is, um, you know, I, I called it re-recruiting. I talked about back in January how West Virginia had to re-recruit some of the receivers. I, I didn't. I let our VIP members know, and we talked about it, I think, more openly after that. But, you know, there were talks of Sam James, Bryce Ford Wheaton potentially entering the transfer portal, and West Virginia essentially had to re-recruit them to stay. And part of that re-recruitment pitch was Graham Harrell. And now, if you have laid out a depth chart, four deep, which my understanding is they did over the weekend— there's going to be somebody upset, maybe two, maybe three somebody's upset, and you might have to re-recruit because you can't go into the season with one. You, can't, you probably shouldn't go into the season with two. You really want to go with three or four. And so I think there is – there if you laid out a four deep, which, again, my understanding is they did on Sunday, you they have to re-recruit somebody. And maybe it's a, hey, hey, we don't want to put it out there right now while we're trying to keep one of these young quarterbacks in the fold. To your point, um, you mentioned Sam James, Bryce Ford Wheaton. Reese Smith was pretty open about his offseason and some of the conversations he had with Neil Brown. Let's be honest. You don't have those conversations. You don't enter them or entertain them without the idea, somebody's idea, that you may leave. I thought it was interesting that, that Smith kind of said parenthetically that after the conversation, Brown came to Smith and said, hey, by the way, we're hiring Graham Harrell. So – it, it is work that's a foot oftentimes in a program, especially when you've had um, player turnover like West Virginia has. So on one hand, you might be kind of cheesed off that they have a name of starting quarterback right now. On the other hand, you might also be the person who has said or repeated what you have heard that programs have to recruit, retain 
and develop. That retain is really, really important too. And that was a question I and others asked Neil Brown in the offseason during those post game, excuse me, post season press conferences, you know, after the bowl, after players leaving in the spring. You know, what do you do about all the players leaving? And do you have to really focus on that middle part? Great to get them here, great to develop them. But if you don't keep them, what good does that do? Listen, Daniels is probably a one, maybe a two year guy. You have quarterbacks with multiple seasons left. You'd much rather be cycling in quarterbacks that has some experience than constantly doing this like getting to know you thing in the spring and sometimes not even the spring, sometimes May and June before you get to camp. That's that's just not healthy for a program. And remember, this is a program that has had going back to the first year after Geno, I think all but three starts have been by transfers at quarterback, right? Which is I incredible. Think, yeah, it's it's something like that. I haven't done the exact data here, but yeah, it's it's all transfers. It's Paul Millard. That's the last one. Chris Chuganov. That's it, right? The Chuggernaut. Yeah, and those, that's not like legacy names or performances there. So you understand why they've gotten the transfer portal. But you also look at offenses that, with rare exceptions, and teams with rare exceptions just haven't been great. And you're really as good as your college football quarterback is. So maybe maybe that's why they're so focused on this right now, too. So I think you're right there. And then and if I could circle back, two things that Brown said that were very interesting to me. One was much later on, and it seemed like he reminded himself of this, but he kind of said, you know, by the way, they haven't named a starting quarterback either, meaning Pitt. Quite likely, their JT Daniels is Keaton Slovis, right? And they haven't named him yet. And what does that mean? Maybe nothing. Maybe they have to go all the way through this. We'll see. Maybe their backup from last year is making a run this year. Don't know. Haven't paid that much attention. I just kind of assumed it was Slovis. But if one hasn't, why do you have to? And I would say this, I've had conversations with people at West Virginia in, in different levels. Um, I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but like really worried about all the time that a team as close as Pitt, um, geographically, how much time and effort they can devote fruitfully to scouting the Mountaineers in a very long offseason. So that's why we've been allowed in to practices, but we haven't been able to film, photograph, report on some stuff. That's why we were allowed at a Saturday practice, but please don't talk about specific personnel injuries or anything like that, because listen, they, they read things. They have 24 seven subscriptions. They do. Okay. They go to newspapers, they watch TV. They have people that do this stuff. All these like armies of staffers and football departments, analysts, scouts, whatever their, their, their job description may be part of their job duties are to find out what the heck's going on with the other team. So that means you got to try to get undercover, so to speak sometimes too. And the less you let out there, um, the better it is for you. And sometimes it's very small stuff and sometimes it's very big things like the identity of your starting quarterback. So that's a big one there too. And then to your point, re-recruiting things, um, Brown kind of said that uh, we've got a really good idea. We just haven't done all the work before I came in here and talked to you all. Um, someone pressed him on, you know, hey, you said second scrimmage. Someone, you know, someone pressed him? Someone pressed him. Um, didn't recognize him, but <laughs> someone pressed him. That was me, wasn't it? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I just haven't noted here, but like we haven't done all the work before I came in here. Yeah, that that kind of says something is still going on there, too. Now, that may be we told everybody we wouldn't make a decision public until the first step chart. So why would you, you know, go back on that? That may be we haven't figured out how to keep everybody in the fold. That probably doesn't mean that we haven't picked somebody, but he, he did kind of say that there's there's some I or T to be dotted or crossed before he can come out and say JT Daniels is our starter. Here's our backup or here's our plan for behind him. But I think there was some honesty in that statement. Yeah. You know what I took from that on the, on your follow-up when he, he said that was we haven't got our social media video yet ready yet oh. our content items ready yet. I, I thought it, I, it, it, it's what first crossed my mind. Well, I mean, cause we've talked about this before. Heck we predicted it yeah. uh, before when we said, when might they announce a, starter and we talked about that thursday night scrimmage you, you know you you hammered home the point um that you got from neil brown that that thursday night scrimmage was so very important that maybe friday morning uh you know at noon there's the video of uh you know neil brown set in advance to be released sitting in his office announcing a starting quarterback on this video that's going to show up on youtube and facebook and everywhere else to just eat up the entire news cycle and, and to be shown everywhere. And 
uh, you know, that didn't come to fruition. And then they they changed up the, the media schedule. And I, I noted this on our board. I said, oh, all of a sudden they canceled, not canceled, they postponed um, a couple assistant coaches we were supposed to talk to Friday, pushed it to Monday, and then added Neil Brown on Monday. And then I talked to someone, capital S someone, who told me, you know, part of that was because Friday was a day off for the players. And so the coaches could meet and talk about the scrimmage. And then I was told on Sunday that some decisions were made. And, and so I think, again, we went into Monday thinking it was going to happen. But, you know, maybe, maybe those videos aren't ready yet. Just yet. Will they I, play the video on a projection screen at Kegler's? That's also possible. Because the other one that I've, I've thought about, and a lot, it's not my original thought. I, I'm sure someone else said it before me, and a lot of people will be in this camp too, is that it's going to be saved until the coaches show, which is what, 48 hours before kickoff? Yeah. Um, there, there's something to be said about kids walking around on campus and not having to be asked who's, to, who's the starting quarterback. If you're Garrett Green, you're Will Crowder, you're Nico Marchio, um, you're JT Daniels, and someone just keeps pestering you about it. They know you, they don't know you, you're in class, you're on your way to the lair, whatever. Like, I've talked to coaches before, too. Like, it's not healthy for everybody in that situation um, if they don't know. But they might know, right? And then also, they don't. even if it's not official, I think a lot of people have an understanding of who it's going to be. But can they get a week from today without saying anything? Yeah. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised at all because that's part of their those, – those coaches shows are part of their, their um, broadcast package rights with Tier 3 and Learfield and all that stuff. So – it's a big deal. Like they get paid to to be there and have a purpose and serve a purpose. So I would not be surprised. I'm not even trying to be disappointed just because like I, I think that's how it goes nowadays. And he's done this before. Like every week when there's a starting thing to be done, he won't do it when he meets with us on Tuesday. He'll wait till Thursday. And a part of that is under the ruse of well, we got to practice a couple times. I don't know. We'll see. But like I, I can definitely see that being like the keystone of his first coaches show next week. Did do you remember what I messaged you after the comment about Pitt not? releasing a starter either <laughs> yes <laughs> i said since nobody else is privy to mike and i's private messaging I, I said this is just a striking resemblance to dana and the tennessee game several years back in charlotte and i, I remember it vividly because i believe it was it it was pruitt right when that pruitt's like yeah first game ever at Tennessee mm -hmm. and and he released a depth chart that just had a bunch of ors or maybe he didn't even release any and then Dana released a depth chart that had like 15 or you know it, it, you know John Smith or Chad Owen you know kind of thing like as the starters and I went on a radio show down there in Knoxville might have been Nashville actually it wasn't even in Knoxville and was asked by a Tennessee guy about the depth chart or something. And I repeated, I believe it was what Dana said on the Kegler show or something similar. Maybe it was a media media call with 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 everybody in the local media, but some to the effect of that, you know, hey, Pruitt's not releasing it, so we'll do the same thing. I can play that game too or something like that. And, oh, my God. Uh, I found out about Vol Twitter that day. Oh, that was a terrible experience. But this is that's what I was thinking about all throughout that when he said, you know, Pitt hasn't announced their starter either. Um, but I'm with you. I think both both teams are in the same boat. Both teams know probably who is starting. Ninety five percent sure who is starting for both teams. And probably both teams are planning, scouting and preparing for their respective situations. Um, let's be fair. Or novel concept. Perhaps they haven't made up their mind. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not great news, right? Okay, okay, wait. You know when I said if they're doing this for gamesmanship, there's a heck of a lot bigger problems. Yeah. This is a bigger problem than that. <laughs> if if it's not gamesmanship and they're still here without a decision, that's even worse than gamesmanship. Yeah. And and these practices this week are too important. Like they're they're in what they call a mock week, which if you haven't heard the question asked and answered a dozen times before, they just simulate everything this week like it is next week. So because they're playing on a Thursday, today is actually their Thursday practice, which is like that really important walkthrough. 
they're going to have quarterback one established by today because they have to get that routine down, right? I mean, that's like they're going to go through stuff like it's a regular game day. They're going to kind of script things out for how this is going to start. They haven't done a ton of pit stuff, but they're doing all WB stuff. So, like, th- there might be some, you know, battle for second or third string stuff. There might be even some battle for starting cornerback or spear. It, but if the quarterback one is close, like, they, they already know where they're at on that one, too. So, and, and just to kind of back up your point, like, I always get into this conversation with people, too about, you know, assistant coaches talking to player or uh, to uh, media or who we have access to. Like, if I'm the reason you lose the pit, man, you got problems, right? <laughs> like, if I'm the reason you go three and six in the Big 12, like, that's something else. It's not the media or your, your time on a Tuesday or stuff like that, too. So, um, I, I don't know. I, I just think sometimes it's, they have a plan. They want to see it through. It could be very easy as that, too. So, um, by the way, you want to close on two stories here? Yeah. Speaking of uh, people not having access to your private messages, that, that went over very well last week. Um, so we'll have another story here, too. In addition to your, your Jeremy Pruitt thing, yeah. um, their football roster the entire summer had names. It did not have jersey numbers, heights, and weights. Online. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. So imagine you are the defensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator. You're watching the spring game. You're watching clips from practice, whatever. You're watching footage from the year before. All right, this guy graduated. Well, who's the backup of this position? Can we find him on tape? I think that's him. Let's go check the roster. How big is he? How old is he? Where has he played? I don't know because I can't reference his number. That was a pain in the neck for them. Um, number one. Number two, they played Georgia Southern a oh, couple yeah. years ago. And it was Skylar Howard's first like real legitimate start he he'd subbed in for Trickett at the end of that prior season but he had the off season he was going to be the quarterback and they were really closed as far as access went that year let some people in sometimes for small stuff and one day we did get to like i remember dana walking around being like hey we're going to go live right now be careful what you report and write and shoot okay great um and they went live and a picture got out um, or a video got out and it was just a real close crop of skylar howard but and you can only see like his shoulders up, but his body went right, his eyes went left, and you could tell he kept the ball. And down in Georgia, they were able to look at that, break it down, make some calls, talk to people, and they figured out that they were going to be an RPO team and they were going to run zone read with Skylar Howard. Didn't matter. They got spanked, right? I think it was 45 nothing, right? Yeah. Which that's a heck of an accomplishment against that offense. But still, they were really mad. And that, I think that actually got – that story got written by – I'm trying to think of who it was. Stephen Godfrey maybe? I think he was embedded with them. But, like, it became, like, a very public thing. And they were just kind of, like, egg on the face about, man, this is what happens when you let people in. And, you know, access kind of got restricted after that. But this is my point. Like, people will go to great lengths to figure out little things that can turn to big things against you there. It's happened here in the past. So they'll keep jersey numbers, heights, and weights out of the public eye for as long as they can. And they will look at the quarterback's eyes in – single shot tightly cropped video footage if it's available online it's it's not an invalid reaction to the to the reality of college football uh, I, for a minute there i thought you're gonna bring up the i believe it was the josh sills photo you remember that story yeah <laughs> from a few years back and it was how did this story get out about him having an injured shoulder or elbow or whatever it was and it was a picture put up on the official wvu website of him in a large brace on his shoulder. It's like, not us. Well, how about not Doug us. Nestor last year? Oh, yeah, with the hand. E- eating a meal in a coach's kitchen with a, with a, a hand oh, yeah. in a cast, and it's on social media, and we're asking about it. Well, how'd you know about this? Huh? Uh, because it sat on our message board with, like, 8,700 users treating it like the Zapruder film, going through, zooming in, Photoshopping, checking elements, all this stuff. It was great. It happens, and sometimes the the less you show, the less your opponent will know. So <laughs> we'll find out in the future here. Um, that's Chris Anderson. See again, it's maybe, not that hard. Maybe, maybe, no confirmation. Let's see, it could be somebody know. else next week. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know the next time we get together. Probably Thursday we'll talk about some of the unanswered questions remaining for West Virginia football, not quarterback edition. Until then, I'm Mike Casaza. And I'm Chris Anderson. Talk to you later.